I am here to communicate one message. That message is that our elections are secure. They are secure because the American election administration system inherently protects them. There are threats to our elections, but the voters have the confidence that their votes will be counted accurately and recorded accurately when they cast them. I thank you for your time, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member and other members of this committee, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Secretary Kemp, you're now recognized for five minutes for your opening remarks. Sorry, good afternoon, and I want to thank Representative Carter for that fine introduction and uh, thank the committee and Chairman Hurd for inviting me to discuss election security, the, safeguard, the safeguards on our elections, and in my perspective as the top elections official in Georgia, the eighth largest state in the union. As Georgia's Secretary of State, I currently serve as co-chair of the National Association of Secretaries of State Elections Committee. And within the, last, within the last three weeks, I've agreed to serve on the Department of Homeland Security's Elections Infrastructure Cyber Working Group organized by Secretary Jay Johnson. Recent events, including the hack of the DNC database, as well as successful cyber attacks against voter registration databases in Arizona and Illinois, have rightfully caused great alarm among the public as well as elections officials. However, it's imperative that we as a nation respond the correct way to these attacks. Administering elections is a great but unique responsibility. The foundation of our republic rests on the trust that Americans have in the way that we elect representatives in our government. If that trust is eroded, our enemies know that they will create fissures in the bedrock of American democracy. We cannot allow this to happen. The D.C. response to these attacks has been to take steps toward federalizing aspects of elections, election systems, and standardizing security measures. There is a better way to face these attacks and future potential threats than what has currently been proposed by DHS with designating election systems critical infrastructure. In discussing election security, it is important to understand the difference between the components of an election. The system is comprised of campaign systems, registration and reporting systems, as well as voting systems. Campaign systems are databases not held by the states, such as databases held by national parties. Attacks on these systems don't disrupt activities in the state's jurisdictions although they can cause harm, as recently seen by the attack on the DNC. Registration and reporting systems are held by the states, but they do not impact the true canvas results in an election. These systems manage the voter registration rolls and report unofficial results on election night. Although, although these systems are more prone to attack than the voting system, because many are web-based platforms, Attacks on these systems cannot change the votes that are cast. These systems are also tested regularly, have redundancies, fail-safes, and backups. Finally, voting systems are the actual equipment used on Election Day. They are non-network pieces of hardware that do not connect to the Internet. They are tested by vendors, by states, and by the EAC. Even before they are deployed, they are tested again by local technicians to ensure their security and accuracy. In looking toward November, it is important for us to address the types of threats that may come against the nation's elections. I view these threats in three different categories. First, there are threats that undermine the confidence in the outcome of the election. This has already started among conspiracy theorists, campaigns, and members of the media. Senator Feinstein was mentioned earlier about Russia's influence. This narrative will likely continue through canvassing and beyond. Although elections officials must be cognizant of these narratives and respond to them as needed, this threat cannot create actual harm to the system or the results of the election. Second, there are threats that disrupt elections. These threats could be cyber attacks on web-based systems, but they more commonly occur with threats of physical violence, verbal altercations, or misinformation distributed at polling locations. In my view, this is far more likely to occur than a coordinated hacking of each individual voting unit in the United States. This type of threat is also not only more probable to occur, but also would have a greater chilling effect on election participation. The third type of threat is altering the outcome of the election. 
This requires an attack on the voting system itself. However, the voting system is layered with combinations of physical and technical security to address these concerns. The voting system is the most secure system in the election space. It is not networked, it's not on the internet, and it's tested many times in many different ways, as well as having overlapping physical security features to defeat cyber attacks as well as physical attacks. This threat would require far too much coordination, planning, and ability to physically manipulate thousands of machines at thousands of locations across the United States. Although it is possible, it is not probable, and there is no evidence it has ever occurred in a U.S. election. As I stated moments ago, Secretary Johnson responded to this threat of cyber attack when he publicly began considering designating the election citizens system critical infrastructure. This, as you can be made aware, or, or you could suggest, caught many elections officials by surprise, and rightfully so. Um, the suggestion from the agency completely um, regarding unfamiliar with the election space raised the level of public concern beyond what was necessary. This decision has been criticized by elections officials and cyber security experts alike and really addresses one of my main concerns and is why I'm so glad to be here today to answer your questions as we proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Kemp. Um, votes have been called, and what we'll do is we'll get to Dr. Pels, um, get through your opening.